Before we get into this, man, I got to talk to YouTube for a second because what they did last night is unacceptable. They sent a lot of y'all uh, a notification about the Ravens signing Danny Woodhead. And that happened like five, six years ago. And then to make it even worse, some of y'all had the nerve to comment on it. Now, look, I appreciate any comments that we get. I, I certainly do. But y'all are really trolling me. Like, really, really simply, you really had to put the anyway. Team, keep it clean. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified for every single thing. Even if YouTube want to troll us for a second like they did yesterday. They probably like, you know what? You ain't made a video in a couple of days. Let's send everybody this old one just to give them a refresher so they don't forget who you are. Anyway, Isaiah Likely. He is a very significant player for the Baltimore Ravens, and we expect his significance to increase even more this upcoming season. We saw a preview last year of everything that Isaiah Likely can do during the regular season, because two years ago we saw it during preseason, but last year we saw it during the regular season, and this man is a baller. So the expectation for all of us and for Isaiah Likely from all of us is that his play, it, it, it takes it to another level this year, but he doesn't do it without Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews doesn't do it without him, but they can both do it at the same time. And I would expect both of them to be on the field a lot. Jeff Zrebic made a really good point because he talked about how he expects a lot of the same thing with Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely to be heavily involved. It's another year with Todd Munkin understanding his players a lot more, with them, the players understanding his system a lot more. So there should be a level of growth. But with that, they have Zay Flowers. He's going to be out there a lot. They got Rashad Bateman, but they really didn't make any significant additions at the wide receiver position as far as veterans or anything like that. Of course, you still got Nelson Aguilar. You got Tez Walker, the rookie, and he's supposed to be a deep threat. But with the Baltimore Ravens and their situation at the pass catching position, with Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, they may favor them being on the field more than some other guys. And of course, you got different packages and whatnot. So not saying that it's 100% going to be Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, but we expect that to be a lot because when you have those two on the field at the same time, you don't know what's coming because you could think, oh, two tight ends on the field at the same time. Oh, they running the ball, but nope. They'll send the tight ends deep or send the tight ends on an intermediate route, whatever it may be. But anyway, Isaiah Likely, knowing that he has a lot of high expectations this upcoming season, knowing everything that he did uh, last year, knowing that his contract, he got two years left on his contract, but after this season, he's eligible for a new deal. Isaiah Likely, he went from Clutch Sports Management and he changed his agency to Rock Nation Sports. So what does that mean for the Baltimore Ravens? Why is that even big news? All he's doing is changing who represents him. Well, this is more of a move for the future because there's been a big question, especially after last season ended, what are the Baltimore Ravens going to do when both of Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely's contracts are up? What, what are they going to do? Are they going to sign both? Are they going to keep both? Or are they going to keep one or the other? Well, uh, this is Isaiah Likely's way of getting sort of ahead of the game and prepping for when that time does come. Now, if I'm an NFL player, like we see it happen all the time, I would want to be re-signed sooner rather than later. Not saying that this is what Isaiah Likely is doing, but it is a high possibility. He may want his bread as soon as he's eligible for his bread. Now, this could have a big impact on this upcoming season because with Isaiah Likely, he changed change his agency and he knows that after this year, he's eligible to get paid that could give him, I mean, he, I'm sure he already had enough motivation as is because he wants to show his stuff. He wants to continue to be a baller. I mean, we've been hearing all these reports about him from minicamp and stuff that he was just killing it, crushing it, always making a crazy amount of plays. But now when you got that money sitting in front of you, when you know it's so close. That'll make you go even harder. I'm sure it happened to a lot of us at work when we know, like, all right, we, we've been working. We, we're usually hard workers, but when we know we're eligible for a raise real soon, oh, yeah, you put in that much more work. So this could have a great impact on the Baltimore Ravens for this year. But then after that, that's where I really got to thinking. That's where I really got to sort of being concerned because right now, and it's still early, we won't really know much of anything until maybe next year or possibly the year after, but we won't know what the Baltimore Ravens are going to do with Isaiah Likely. Now, of course, we want them to keep both. We want them to keep both Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, but we know that the business is tough. It's a really tough business, and these teams, they got to make some tough, tough decisions. So with Isaiah Likely changing who represents him, him going under new, a new agency, 
he could be gearing up for whatever that tough decision could possibly be. Could he be like, all right, Baltimore Ravens, hey, you saw what I did this past season. Of course, this will be in 2025 after this year. He could be like, look, I'm ready to get paid. Pay me. Let's get it done. Or if the Baltimore Ravens possibly don't want to pay him then, he could re possibly request a trade. Th these are all different scenarios that could possibly happen. He could request a trade. He could say, you know what? You don't want to pay me? Send me to somebody who will. It's all stuff that you got to think about. You don't want to, but as a business, you got to think about it. Or he could be like, you know what? I'll play out my last year here. I I I'll play it out. We'll, 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 we'll just ride it out one more year. That's a possibility as well. Because you just don't you just don't know. But it is something that is definitely going to impact the Baltimore Ravens in a big way. Because Isaiah likely, again, he's looking to take another step this year. And if everything goes as planned, then there's going to be some tough conversations even after this season is done. And we know the Baltimore Ravens last year, they had one of the top offenses in the league and the number one defense. After all, they got the number one seed in the AFC. And of course, we know how everything ended. But anyway, watching their offense last year, it was a thing of beauty because we watched the Baltimore Ravens offense just grow throughout the year. They continued to get better and better. They got stronger and stronger and they got more diverse as each week went along. They sprinkled in new wrinkles in the offense they sprinkled in different plays they got different players involved and they had so many different ways that they could get it done so many different ways that they could make it happen and we loved it so that's why when I looked at this list that featured uh, the expected top 10 offenses of 2024 I was confused because I looked in up and down on the list and I did not see any Baltimore Ravens on there. But let's go over some of these teams that are there. The San Francisco 49ers. All right. I get why they are expected to be number one offense on here. Them being on this list, I got no issue with because they are also a team. They find a million different ways to do it with a million different players. They make it happen on offense so many different ways. I love how their offense operates and they, yeah, they deserve to be on there. The Kansas City Chiefs, self-explanatory. We already know. Uh, the Detroit Lions, their running game been strong and Jared Goff, he's been doing his thing over there too. So, all right, cool. The Los Angeles Rams. Okay, you got Puka and Cooper Cup. So, them receivers be catching like uh, 50 balls a game. Um, but uh, uh, them being on there, uh, Ravens could have took that spot. The Cincinnati Bengals. All right, if Joe Burrow's healthy, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, he's back. Uh, he ain't going to get traded this year. It ain't looking like. So, it's like, okay. And their running game been nice, too. They just got um, the running back who was just dogging the Ravens in that Colts game. I forget his name. Zach Moss. They just got him, uh, got rid of Joe Mixon, and he went to the Texans, who are also on this list, by the way. So, But Bengals being on there, all right, cool, I get it. Miami Dolphins, self-explanatory. Number one offense last year. They got a track team. They added even more speed, and now Odell Beckham Jr., he's going get, to get a piece of the pie, too. I, I get them being on there. The Packers, Jordan Love, he was coming on strong toward the end of the last season, and he did his thing. He uh, Somebody said that he's going to be the next superstar at quarterback. I believe them. So them being on the list, I see it. Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen. He be doing so much crazy stuff. He does a lot of turnovers, but they be putting up a lot of points and a lot of offense. So them being on there as well. Houston Texans, C.J. Stroud, they just added a bunch of weapons to that offense to make them even better, even stronger. Okay, I get it. And the Colts, what am I missing? Is Jonathan Taylor? No, no offense to them. He's a play, but what, what am I missing to where? Because the, the, the two teams, again, number four and number 10, the Rams and the Colts, that's where this list really lost me yet. So for them to put those two teams on here and not have the Ravens as one of the expected top 10 offenses, you saw what they did last year in the first year. Brand new offense. Why wouldn't they be able to do even better in the second? 